never go there. We cannot falter in the battle. We're tried and true. Welcome, everybody, to the Indiana Basketball Weekly Show on the Girly Truth Sports Network. I would like to apologize because I think Brian's got a Cub shirt on. But I am your host, Mike Goodpaster. Put that down. Would you wear that in Little League? What, what does that like say? What does that say? It says it's World backwards. Series. It's the only shirt you could possibly have in 110 years, or the past 110 years also, that would have that, Brian. So congratulations. All right, guys. Indiana beats Wisconsin last night, 74 to 70. And make sure before you do anything else, if you want to bet on any college basketball games or any sport in particular, go to BetMGM. You can click on the link in the description down below in YouTube to check them out. But Brian, how you doing today? Oh, hell of a lot better than the last couple of weeks. It's a nice, of course, it stayed up a little later than planned last night, thanks to uh, whoever pulled the fire alarm. But, um, yeah, and that fire alarm saved our ass, I think, because that game was 54 54 at that time. And it looked to me like Ware was starting to get a little bit tired. You were probably going to have yep. to sit him for a couple minutes. I'm not going to complain about it. I'm fine with it. And mm -hmm. I think that somebody needs to pull the fire alarm every once in a while, just in case. And here you go. Robert Stewart tells you what a real team is go Reds. Go ahead, Brian. What do you think? Yeah, when's the last time you won the World Series? Uh, well, I can tell you this I've seen my team in five World Series since I've been alive, and we've won three of them, so you might want to just be a little Old news. quiet there. Yeah, and the only way you guys won is because you beat Cleveland, which is the only city more pathetic than Chicago. The game of all time, Game 7, 2016. Was it the greatest game of all time? The greatest game of all time was either the 1975 Game 6 or 1991 Game 7, but go ahead. Nah, I'm sticking with what I just said. <laughs> I know, but you're wrong. But that's yeah, all right. Even Sports Illustrated said it was the game of all time. Sports Illustrated is filled with a bunch of hack left wing liberals like Tom Brew. <laughs> Why the hell would you want to go with anything that Tom Brew has ever done or said? Let's get back to the Hoosiers. Last night, the okay. story. The story has to be a Khalil Ware, because if we were naming the Big Ten player of the year off one game, it would be him. <laughs> because last night, he made his first eight shots, finished 11 for 12 for the field, scored a game-high 27 points in 38 minutes, and he scored 20 of those 27 points in the first half. That offensive arsenal is why he's likely to be gone after this year, because last night showed the NBA the kind of ability he had. And I'm not even talking about offense. He had five block shots, God. and he was absolutely amazing last night. He did nothing wrong. I mean, if you look at it, like you said. He missed that shot. One shot out of 12. I'll take that any day of the week. Five blocks, 11 rebounds. Uh, he was one for one at the from three-point. He was four from four for the field free throw line. He, he didn't do anything wrong last night, except he didn't pull the, you know, pull the fire alarm. Maybe he he pulled it. I'm tired. <laughs> but um, the other thing here that stands out to me on the stat sheet is Trey Galloway, 12 assists, only two turnovers. We've been hard on him as of late, but he played really well last night, I thought. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, that combination, they were, Wisconsin could not stop that combination of, uh, Galloway feeding Ware in the post uh, all night long, and they just kept going back to it. Uh, got a little quiet last in the second half just because a certain other forward had to get his points uh, in the second half, but I think it was an unstoppable combination. I mean, I got to believe at least seven or eight of those assists were Galloway to Ware. Yeah, and I'll tell you, though, Malik Radu, you just brought him up as being that other guy. <laughs> this dude seems to slip farther into the abyss in each game. And last night, he picks up a fifth foul for no reason. I mean, under, what, three or four minutes left? He just reaches out and smacks a dude on the arm who's seven feet tall, running 30 feet from the basket. And then when Woody gets on his ass about it, he actually Twice. tried to defend himself. And then he went and he sat on the bench and he pouted. And I would think that if people worried about people leaving in the transfer portal, Malik Renew would be at the head of that list, I think, right now. And I'm fine with I, you know, I, I heard, and I don't know if it's true, but 
you know, we didn't, we didn't foul very much last night. We had a lot of fouls to give away and somebody claims that one of the assistants yelled out to foul, but you know what? And he didn't realize he had four. How could you not know you have four fouls? And Why did anybody that's an assistant yell at him to foul somebody in that situation? What, with under two minutes to go? Yeah, I mean, we were in a tie game at that point. Uh, I thought we were up by two when he fouled. Either way, I mean, up by two with two minutes left, why would you foul? I'm just telling you what I heard. I didn't say I agreed with it. I just tell you what I heard. Well, either Malik, I don't... well, either Malik's an idiot or an assistant coach is an idiot. But whichever one's the bigger idiot, get her get their ass out of here because that was stupid. <laughs> um, the rest of the game, Xavier Johnson returned. He shot the ball all right. I think he made two of his three shots, made a free throw or something. But the five turnovers in 15 minutes is unacceptable. I would like to see him get himself under control because if he does and he plays well, we could actually have a five-man team here that could go to the Big Ten tournament and might be able to win a game or two. Yeah, I mean, you know, the five turnovers, you can maybe equate to Rust a little bit since he hasn't played in, what, five or six games. But I thought he actually did pretty well for not playing. I mean, Really? You know, five tur turnovers? Hey, how many times has, has Galloway had five turnovers or more? And he's playing the he's playing but every see, game. But this is the thing: if you're going to use that, then you know Mike Woods is full of crap for complaining because Xavier Johnson's gone because Trey Galloway is not a point guard. So I That's, expect a guy. I'm who's, not arguing that. Yeah, I mean, you just can't play like that. And let's face it: out of Xavier's games this year, there's been more, a lot more bad games than good games for him. I remember what he played one good game started the Big Ten season. Was it? I can't remember who it was, but he's had a couple good games. But the majority of his games have not been great. But we're all going to hold out hope. And this is the thing. I mean, last night, this team played hard, which is something we have not seen. I mean, they played hard for 40 minutes. I never Both felt like they backed up. It, it did feel to me like they were starting to get into that lull when the fire alarm got pulled. I mean, it seemed to me oh. like Wisconsin had slowly reeled them in. And you can see Wisconsin with a lot of energy, and mm -hmm. that happened at the perfect time for Indiana. Of course, Wisconsin played – well, they had – I think they went 10 deep last night. They had 10 players in the game. Um, but I think what you saw was really a combination of a, a really good offense last night and a good defense. I mean, that's probably the best defensive game they've played in a long time. And, I mean, you look at the stats – and Indiana held Wisconsin pretty much under what they normally do in three-point and field goals, um, rebounds. I mean, they're, they, they were below their season average in every key stat. And you got to give the defense for Indiana credit for that, and especially where. Well, and also, they didn't really go 10. They went with six. I mean, you got three or four guys that all played like five minutes. But, I mean, Blackman, I think, off the bench is the only one that really played double-digit minutes. And he scored 11 points. points. Four yeah. of their starting five were there. So, really, there were short benches on both sides, which you will see this time of the year. You kind of know who can play and who can't play. Peyton Sparks can't play. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it's just sad to watch. He I mean, can – He can. let's put it this way. He can bang. How's that? Well – that's good for him. But let's see. <laughs> We've got Robert Stewart build up some Mo before the tourney. I, I will say this. I'll say the same thing as before. I'm not overly excited about this because to me it's a one-off until it's done again. And I think the perfect opportunity exists for that because they play Maryland next. And Maryland is one of the top five defensive teams in the country. So we're right. going to see if this offense works better. But I can say this. If Khalil Ware wants to pull a Trace Jackson Davis, put this team on his back, I mean, this team could be hard to beat with him playing like that because there's – I mean, Zach Eady is not as good as Khalil Ware, not as a basketball player. As a college player, of course, he's had a great career. But, but Khalil it, Ware, it, it, he shoots the ball better. He he jumps better. I mean, he's just yeah. not seven foot four. Does Eady even jump? I thought it was more of like a bounce. I don't <laughs> think he needs to jump. He's seven foot four. So when he raises his arms up, he's at a goal damn near. Um, when we look at this, Gabe Cups, 
It was Gabe Cups. He didn't play terrible. I mean, there's no turnovers, two points, 18 minutes. Um, and Baco, four for 10 from the field, two for three or two for five from three point range, four for five free throws. He had a couple bad defensive laps, but overall a decent game. Yeah, because he had he had a block. I mean, there were what seven blocks in the game, I think, or eight blocks, and of course five were wares. But Mbako and Renew and Walker uh, Walker all had blocks. So um, I, I really think it was just a. I, I give them the hat, tip the hat to Ware, but I, I think it was a real team effort this time. I, I can't say that I on defense it definitely was. Yeah, and and. Um, the only thing that surprised me, honestly, was the referees in this game because they really, you know, there wasn't a lot of fouls on either side. I think what um, Wisconsin only went to the line three times, shot, made two out of three. Yeah, they didn't shoot any in the second half, did they? I not that I remember, but I mean, it was. It seemed like the officiating they were letting the kids play, which was kind of nice to see, except for for the. Uh, Renew foul, which was so obvious, I could have been in the top row of Assembly Hall and seen that one. But I don't know. I've seen pictures from the top row of Assembly Hall. I don't even know if you can see the court, can you? Yeah, I've been up there. (laughs) Can you actually watch a game up there if you're not 20 years old? I am. In my how old were you when you watched it up there? 19. Okay, so you wouldn't even be able to see the floor right now. Well, okay. That's why I have glasses, you son of a bitch. <laughs> hey, there's no name calling here. It's just the way God made you. He made you old. You've been an old soul since you were born. All right. So but what you know, what, what three point shooting? That was dramatically improved last night. Yeah, because they made them. I mean, it was yeah. one of the best shooting performances of the season. They were 62% from the field, 43% from the three point range. Five different Hoosiers made a three pointer. And I think the primary key here is this. What we've never seen before is ball movement. And we saw that last night. They actually passed the ball around the perimeter. Right. And then they were actually moving the ball pretty fast up the court. I mean, there wasn't a lot of – there were some, but there wasn't a lot of slow dribbles up the court. I mean, they were moving the ball. They were passing it around. It was probably one of the better offensive movements I've seen on the team in a while. Well, and this may sound weird, but what gives me hope is it wasn't, it didn't happen when Xavier came in. Not saying that it stopped when he came in, but what I'm saying is before he even came in the game, those first eight minutes there, and he ends up 17 to 10, and the ball was moving. He came in, it continued to move. I do see some hope after this game, and not a tremendous amount just because I've seen the rest of the season, but I did see improvement last night. The big thing there is, can you carry that improvement over to the weekend against Maryland? Well, yeah. And what you saw at Xavier, if you remember, you know, he's so quick. He was moving the ball. He passed the ball to Galloway on a full gallop. And I don't think anybody else on that team could do what he did there. I mean, he passed. I'm pretty court. sure somebody could have thrown that wide open pass to a wide open guy. But I, I do know that the narrative. Not at a full team. speed, though. I know if you had an NBA team, you would draft Xavier Johnson with a lottery pick. But, I mean, let's face it, he was terrible last night. If you got a point guard that plays 15 minutes and he's got five turnovers, that's bad. Now, we could sit there and use the excuse that he wasn't ready to play, but we did the same thing when he came back before and he played horrible. But then the second game, he was awesome, and you guys were questioning whether I wanted to eat my words, and then I didn't have to because he played the next four games after that. So I want to see consistency from him. If we get that, I mean, because let's face it, we're not winning anything if Anthony Leal. The funniest thing I saw on the internet all all t- this morning was the fact that somebody put, this is why Anthony Leal leads to play, because when he makes a three-pointer, we almost always win. And you look it up, they do. They're four and one. So he's a shooting guard. That uh, how many night, shots? The last night <laughs> played 12 minutes. He took one shot and he made it. But right. this shooting guard, Indiana is four and one when he makes a three. So he's made a three pointer in five games this year. He's not a player that can play at this level. I mean, he hustles. He tries really hard. Bless his heart. But he's not quick enough. He doesn't defend well enough. He can't create his own shot. He has to run off a pick. He has to be wide open. And, you know, it has to get lucky to go in. 
Well, let's face it. I mean, I, I think there could be a domino effect here. I mean, you know, X took his first three and made it. If he can make it from deep, it'll take pressure off of Galloway. And hopefully, I mean, Galloway missed a lot of three-pointers last night. And hopefully the pressure's off him to have to score from well, deep. Well, Johnson's going to miss a lot also, though. I mean, if you watch either uh, one of them shoot, they both push the ball. Neither one of them are really great shooters. And Baco looks like a shooter to me. Well, right. I mean, so what you're going to get with X has, is, X has that funky shot, no question. Okay? Yeah. So what you get but out you of that is he's, he's, true shooting percentage. He's the third highest on the team. Look okay. it up. That is yes. horrible on this team. First yes, and second, he's the third uh, highest. True shooting percentage on this team. Okay. And he's played in what? Eight games? It's more than he played last year. <laughs> All right. But to say that you are the best shooter outside of wearing him on this team is not saying a lot. And also. Well, you I say mean, he's a terrible shooter. Yeah, he is. He, no, I didn't say he was terrible. I said he's streaky because he shots jacked. You know, so once in a while you get on a streak there, it works out. And that's what we've seen from him. He's never been a consistent shooter. I don't think anybody's going to say that he's a great outside shooter. And to say that you're the best outside shooting uh, shooter on this team is like saying you're the skinniest guy at Fat Camp. <laughs> so uh, I stick with my guns. And Robert Stewart made a joke about your age that I am not going to put up on the screen. But... Robert. I know. It's just rude. That's because I busted him already. So, Busted him for what? Oh, he's always he's too busy to, working to be on, on the page and make comments or moderate the, the Got Woodson page. But every time, he has all the time in the world to talk to girls here on our. On our so show. how much do you pay him to work on the Got Woodson page? The same amount that I make. Yeah, but I mean, he's helping you, and you're so unappreciative that you're gonna, you know, gang on him because he can't do everything you demand of him. What are you drinking today, Brian? That's not Coca Cola, is it? Yes, it is. Sure, it is. What's in with it? Rum. That's what I thought. That's disgusting. All right, next up, <laughs> we will battle. Is that on Sunday to Maryland Terrapins? And we all hope that Mr. Um, geez, now I forgot his name. 22. Jordan Geronimo? Thank you. He had a great game last game, so he's due for a bad game this game, right? That's Why would you cheer for him to have a bad game? He was a Hoosier. He's not a Hoosier anymore. It doesn't matter. Once a Hoosier, always a Hoosier, right? Well, if he, if he makes the G League, I'll root for him when he's in the G League. How's that? It's kind of rude. I don't know why you'd want to tear a young man down. Maybe one of his cousins are watching this show. <laughs> That's how you make a joke about your Facebook page. All right. Yeah. Uh, when we look at Maryland, we know they've got three guys that can get it done offensively. That's about it, though. Defensively, they're extremely good, though, Brian. Yeah, they are. I, there's, there's, They're going to have to play at the same level of intensity as they did against Wisconsin to win this game against Merrill. And I, think they, to, I think they got to play even a higher one because you're going on the road. Well, yes and no, but if you, I remember right, um, the center for Maryland, what's his name? Um, shoot. Okay, you're talking about Reese or Scott? Reese. Because really they play with like three forwards and two guards. Right. Yeah. But if I remember right, Ware pretty much had his way with Reese last, last game when they played us at, at, at Bloomington. Yeah, the only problem is this ain't the last game in Bloomington. This is a new game. And, yes, I believe Ware will – I mean, put it like this. From what we saw from Ware, Ware should probably dominate every game we play against whatever big man he plays against. Yeah, and, and I agree with your – you made the comment, but I think he actually did it last night. He put the team on his back and decided to hell with this. I'm going to do it. And he well, did. It's the quickest way to get paid going to the NBA, too. Because that's yeah. what you want to see. Now, Reese did score 14 points and had eight rebounds in the last matchup between these two. And Ware had 18 with 14 rebounds. Kind of a toss-up, but Ware outplayed him. 
Um, Renew had 11 points. Mbaku had 13. Trey Galloway had 12 with six assists. Anthony Walker scored six points, played 21 minutes. And, I mean, you had a much deeper bench then. You had C.J. Gunn. You had Caleb Banks. You had Anthony Leal, Peyton Sparks. Whatever happened to Caleb Banks? It's a mystery. Mm, not really. <laughs> it's not really a mystery, but we're, we're not going to say Do you that know who loud. I am? Yes, that's what I heard. Yeah, um, I think it's pretty obvious why we haven't seen him. So I, I'm assuming he, he will be done soon. And the last time we played them, we held them to 35% from two-point range. The big thing is they were only two for 16 from three-point range, 12%. We were three for nine, so well, not a lot there. They're not a really good three-point shooting team anyway. No, they're not a really good shooting team at all. They're a oh, defensive period. team. We did out-rebound them 46-30 last game, which included offensive rebounds 15-10. to We also had 17 assists to their eight assists. They actually blocked more shots than we did. But when I evaluate this game, I mean, we have to, as Robert says here, we have to rebound the ball the way we did the first time. I mean, yeah. what were the rebounds last night? How close was it? It, it was pretty close, actually. Uh, Wisconsin had 27. We had 31. And that's right around our average for the year, Wisconsin. Yeah, but didn't they have, like, 10 offensive rebounds that are, like, four? But they only scored, like, five points off of the offensive off rebounds. Off the rebounds, right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think this, I think what we've got here is I think this matchup coming up is much tougher because it's on the road. But I also think this, right now, Maryland, I think, is a better team than Wisconsin. Wisconsin has looked like crap for a while now. And I think Maryland's a team that we've seen after a slow start. They're kind of streaky, but that defense is always there. And that defense is going to keep them in every game. And that defense is going to make it so you have to play well to beat them, and you have to play hard because if not, they'll run us out of the building here. What was the what was the score of the previous game in Indiana? I think it was Maryland? sixty-six to fifty-three, wasn't it? So it's pretty low scoring game. Yeah, it was well, sixty-five fifty-three. Indiana led forty to twenty-eight at the end of the first half, and then it was twenty-five twenty-five after that. Maryland came into the game at four and four, so they left it four and five. I know after that they beat UCLA, not a huge deal, but they've had some decent wins since then. And I think they've only lost one one or two games at home this season, haven't they, in the Big Ten at least? Yeah, I think they've lost two. Yeah, because that didn't they lose to Purdue? They lost to Purdue, and I want to say was it Penn State? I'm not I think, sure. I'm not going to guess. I, I think, think Penn that. State. I think Penn State upset them at home. Well, yeah, I mean, anytime you lose at home, you get upset. Well, here's the key. We knocked Maryland off. They dropped down into the bottom four for the for the tournament. So it's an important game. If Indiana doesn't want to have to play four days in a row in the Big Ten tournament, they really need this win against Maryland. Because right. they, they... Maryland beat Illinois at Illinois. I've only found one home loss so far. They beat Iowa at Iowa. Okay, they lost by two to Michigan State at home. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. It was Mich I, hey, I had the state part right. It was just the wrong state. <laughs> and they lost to Rutgers at home. So they've lost three games at home. Which last year I don't think they, they lost a game. Four games at home because they lost to Alabama too. So they've yeah, lost a few true. games at home. It's not as scary now. Now I'm going to pick us to win after I looked at that. <laughs> Well, I still think yeah, it's a key game for us because it gets us on a roll. If we can win two out of the last three, we'll get especially if we beat Maryland. Uh, we put them down the bottom four of the for the tournament, and we get into the middle bracket. And that's what we really should be hoping for because you don't want to play four games in a row, four days in a row. I don't think any uh, has any yeah. team ever been in that bottom four and actually won the tournament? I don't think in the Big Ten they have, but I think there have been a couple teams to do it in the past, and then those teams got summarily bounced in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Right now, we are on the edge. We are tied with Maryland. So, yeah, this is a huge game. If Indiana beats Maryland, they stay above that line. And then you've still got – we get to play Minnesota yet. Minnesota's 8-8. Eight and eight. Um, Penn State's 8-10. and 10. You could catch both of them. I think uh, Iowa is probably pushing it. We're a game and a half behind them. We right. are two games behind Michigan State. But I think this is something where you could possibly jump Penn State and Minnesota if you play really well. 
and that puts you at like the eight seed. The only problem with that is the eight seed puts you in Purdue's bracket, probably. Yeah, you're right. And but, I don't really want that. Well, I don't know. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why would you want to? They're by far the best team. So the best thing to do is be on the opposite side of the bracket and hope uh, Illinois or a Northwestern can upset them. And it could happen. Well, and, I mean, really, that bottom four is dangerous because Ohio State's sitting there. And Ohio State's probably – playing better ball. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, if I if – I, this is the question. Ohio State's sitting 16 and 12. They've got three variable, very winnable games back or there. Do they get back on the bubble? <coughs> if they win, well, if you go games? on their net rankings, they probably will. They could be right on that last four in. Yeah. Uh, they host Nebraska, they host Michigan, and then they go to Rutgers. Those are three winnable games. Now, I do also know this they upset Purdue, they upset Michigan State. The Purdue thing's a big deal. Michigan State, not so much. You never know what you're getting with them. In between there, they did lose to Minnesota at Minnesota. I think it's going to be rough for them to get in just because, number one, even if they win the next three games, they're 9-11 and 11 to finish the season in the Big Ten. The Big Ten is well, not a tough conference. I don't see them winning the, the last three. I, I think they lose at Rutgers. I mean, they could beat Minnesota, but I I just don't see them beating Rutgers at Rutgers. And you know, Rutgers, they, be, go ahead. The thing that gets me is I think Purdue, Illinois, I think Northwestern, Nebraska, Wisconsin are all in. But right now, if you had to pick a six team to get in from the Big Ten, would you pick Michigan State or Iowa? I honestly, I hate to say this because I hate Fran McCaffrey, but I really have to think Iowa's got a shot. I agree. I mean, I think right now they're a the better team. And didn't they just beat Michigan State at Michigan State? Right. So, I mean, you know, they're just. They're the opposite of Maryland. I mean, their offense is really, really good. Their defense sucks. Yeah. But when they're on offensively, they're really tough to beat. Yeah, and they've shown that because they gave Illinois all. If they would have won that Illinois game, I think they would be firmly on the bubble right now. Yeah. I think right now they're probably just a little bit outside of that bubble. Um, what do you think? Who wins this game this week? We've got Indiana against Maryland. Hold on here. I think Robert's asking a question I was actually answering. I didn't know I was answering it. How many Big Tens into the dance? I'm saying four no, Big five. Tens now. I think it is six. I think Michigan State will get grandfathered in because of Daddy Izzo, and he's got his streak going. Um, Robert, I did not forget IU was going to win the big tournament. I can't forget something that's never happened. All right. Um <laughs> I wouldn't. I'm not. I'm not as sure as you are. At State gets in because they're not. They are so inconsistent right now. I. I know, but they've got a very. Their net ranking still in the top twenty-five, isn't it? I can't believe it's still. In the, I haven't looked, but I can't believe it's still in the top twenty-five. Well, here I will look, and we'll let you know. Well, then but, let's do that. Let's see what they say. Well, they won't say anything. Do you want to see the net rankings on women's college basketball too? Not let's particularly. See. Nobody does. Let's see. What am I looking for? All right. Right now, Purdue is number two. We'll just go Big Ten teams. Purdue at number two. Uh, ooh. Oh, they may not be too good off. Hold on. Well, yeah, they are. Purdue at number two. Right now, we've got Illinois at 16. Wisconsin at 22. Michigan State at 24, Brian. This is this is that updated daily? Yes, yes, get this, get this. All right, when you look at this, Wisconsin in quad one games is six and six, they're 18 and 10 overall. Michigan State is three and seven, 17 and 11 overall, and they're only one spot or two spots behind them. That doesn't make any sense, it makes no sense whatsoever. But that's why I say, unless they lose a few at the end. They're going to get in. And then the next team, oh, man, Indiana State Sycamores moved up to 31 yesterday. Um, oh, yeah, the other Indiana school. Purdue? <laughs> right now, Indiana's the third Indiana school. Um, oh, yeah, on, the rest, Notre, Dame's Notre Dame's nowhere near them. Butler's ahead of Notre Dame. Butler's yeah. still got a shot to get in a tournament. Um, and that's the other thing. We talked about St. John's. 
you see what Rick Patino's team did to respond after he basically chewed all their asses out and called them out in front of everybody? They blew out Creighton, one of the top 10 or 15 teams in the country. They won again the other night. They're going to go to Butler and win the night, and he's going to show you how to coach basketball, Brian. How about that? No, we could argue this one all night long. Well, you can't argue something that has worked. Well, you're saying it worked. How do you know it worked? Well, because they beat the hell out of Creighton, a team that beat the hell out of them right before that. Um, oh, Pittsburgh, your wife's team is at 49. No, they're they're going to be the tri- So I'm going to watch her team in the tournament, and I'm going to sit there and go, Ugh. I, I don't think they – I don't know. South Carolina is 22-5, and five and they're 48. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think – Honestly, I think you – Iowa, I think, Iowa, Iowa's 59 right now. Okay, so they're on the bubble. Yeah, two and eight and quad one. I don't think they're on the bubble. They're way off the bubble at fifty nine. I mean, to be on the bubble, bubble you teams to, to me. Yeah, I think Northwestern is fifty two. I think they're on the bubble just because of the competition they play. They're four and five in quad one games, and they do have a win over the team that's number two. Damn near beat the number two team twice. But with Iowa, you don't have those kind of wins. Butler sits at sixty three right now. Um, Maryland is 67. Minnesota yeah, I, I is mean, 77. The net rankings is one aspect that the, the selection committee looks yeah, at. Yeah, but it's, it's one the that they, yeah, but it's one that they heavily weight towards. At least that's what they said last year when I watched them interviewed. Penn State is 94. Really? Yeah. Indiana moved from 107 to 105. No, we're heading in the right direction anyway. That is that is <laughs> better up than down. U, USC at eleven and sixteen is one oh one. And they're 0 and six in quad one what? games. So they're really six? yeah, what I when I look at this, the quad things, Rutgers is ninety eight. The quad the net rankings make absolutely no sense to me every time I look at them. Well that's why I don't think they put as much weight as you think they do. I think uh, it's factored, but I don't think it's the I don't, well, think I, don't think, really I don't think it's the be-all, end-all, but I think it's a big deal, especially, I mean, the other rankings are usually fairly similar. But, but don't they use, do they I, use Kempom? Don't they use Kempom, too? Yes, they do. Hold on. Let's look up the Kempom. We'll see where the Kempom is right now. Here's look. another one. Here's another one. Yeah, I had a Riley. I can't. Oh, I'm yes. looking up Kempom ratings. Um, oh, your breath stinks. On right. there... You can't even smell my breath. I'm like 10 states away. I'm talking about Riley. <laughs> Illinois is number 10. Michigan State is 19 on it. What? Yeah. Yeah. Makes a hell of a lot of sense, don't it? <laughs> I wonder where we are on it. On Northwest, Northwestern is 44. Maryland's 45. Indiana State's 47. These rankings are stupid. Um, where the hell is Indiana? Maybe we don't. I, how far how far down did they go at Ken Palm? I think they don't. They don't Indiana, go all the way down. Indiana's number one hundred and two. We're hanging out with UC San Diego and Akron. Oh joy! Pretty good company though. Don't so, like what's your prediction for Sunday? Honestly, I think Maryland wins the game. I hate to say it, but it's on the road. We haven't really proven we can beat much of anybody on the road except unless Juwan Howard shows up to coach Maryland. Um, <laughs> I mean, the last team we beat on the road, it shocked them so much they fired their fucking coach. So, well, there you go. All I can tell you is, on the Maryland coach, this is a must-win situation. You don't want to get fired. <laughs> But, no, no, he's safe. He got he got Derek Queen now, so he's safe for another year. I think Indiana loses to Maryland 68-57. I hate to say that. I really do. But until they can show me this twice in a row. But I do take this. Greg Gar's a bad coach. Woody outcoached him. Khalil Ware was the best player on the court. And thank God for whoever pulled that fire alarm. I, I I'll take it a little farther. Khalil Ware was the best player in NCAA last well, night. Let's, let's not overdo it. No, he was in the in the in not not for the season in that game. He was that dominant. Doesn't matter because actually, if you look at the NBA thing where you've got eighteen or seventeen guys selected in front of him in the mock draft, 
he's probably like the third best player in America because the first 14 are names I can't pronounce from France and Spain and Italy. Well, what does that tell you? <laughs> well, it tells you that's why the NBA is what to shit because there is no relevance from college basketball to NBA basketball now because how can you get excited when the guy coming to your team first, you can't even pronounce his name and his you've name. never seen him play. You I mean, could really, put him on the back of your jersey. No, and really, <laughs> that that is a huge problem the NBA has right now. I mean, almost everybody being picked in the first round, at least the top part of the first round, are foreigners. And I just hope I hope the Lakers select Bronny James, team him up with his dad. And then, I mean, because let's face it, the other thing that blows my mind is the fact that nobody ever brings up the fact that LeBron James is probably on steroids. He's like 38, 39 years old, and he is the same as what he was at 28. Even Michael Jordan got old. Seriously. And you look at the way he's ripped and the muscle he puts on from year to year. That dude ain't legit. So, but what the hell? Well, then we can just throw all those stats out, put a little asterisk by it. Like we did well, the good Carter. thing is this, is he started in the NBA. The NBA has disappeared to even mattering. So, will it even matter? No. I mean, because right now their rankings fall between the WNBA and what, NASCAR maybe? <laughs> well, I mean, we all know about NASCAR. <sighs> or indie racing, any kind of auto racing. Robert knows what I'm talking about. But, all right, guys, tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock, we will be back, and we are going to do a special Indiana Basketball Weekly looking at the last 25 years and the effect the administration has had on the basketball program, whether that be good or bad, we will discuss that tomorrow night. And if you want to send us any messages, if you know anything we don't know, you can send a message to me on X at Grueling Truth. You can send a message to Brian at got underscore Woodson, or is it Dash Woodson? Dash. Dash Woodson on X. But we hope you guys come back to watch the show tomorrow night. I think it's a different perspective you won't see from anybody Anywhere else. else. <laughs> and my favorite thing was still Dan Dockage ripping on Khalil Ware about the way he plays and his tattoos. And then I looked up this morning, and, and Khalil Ware's one season at Indiana. He has already scored 35 more points than Dan Dockage scored in four years. I found that hilarious. Well, you know, unfortunately, you know, Dan's from the same region of the state as I am. And then unfortunately, he's that's usually, you know, yeah, I mean, that's what all you guys end up being like. So uh, if you're, are you comparing me to Dockage? No, he's taller and he's probably better looking. I'm just kidding. He ain't better looking. Than, <laughs> he ain't better looking than a fat girl with cellulite's ass. But what the hell? Well, you know, he's got that. He's been such a success. He's gotten fired everywhere he goes. He got fired again in the last day or two, didn't he? From the new radio gig he got. Did he really? I didn't hear that. Yeah, one hundred seven point five. I saw somebody tweet about. It. I think it was the Indy Star. Probably Greg Doyle since they hate each other. Tweeted yeah, it out well, that he was Doyle fired. And nobody knows why. And well, Greg Doyle's an idiot too. It's one of those guys don't get along. Those two and Tom Brew could have like the biggest, ugliest circle jerk anybody's ever seen between the three of them. Oh, you could have Sterling and Dockage and Brew. There was four of them. There you go. There you got you go. Sterling, Dockage, Brew, Doyle. The four stages. Oh, Larry Curly Shep. The four stooges. <laughs> All right. And if any of you guys think we're assholes, because I know a couple of you do watch and you want to come on, you're more than welcome to come on because I think that would be fun. And maybe we could, you know, what would be fun is if we could get Dan to come on. And I'm asking anybody want to tweet this to Danny can what we could do just to show everybody the night he shut down the great Michael Jordan, we could actually live stream the game because I got a videotape of the game. We could watch the game with him and he could explain to us exactly what he was thinking and how he shut down Michael Jordan and then what he did offensively to score all the points he scored that night. <laughs> that would be fun. You can actually, you, I've seen the video. You can actually say, see him saying, oh, crap, when, when Jordan blows right by him. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not going to rip on that, but I'm going to rip on the fact that today he's given all kind of interviews about the time he shut down Michael Jordan in 1984. Yeah, well. I think he's doing that to get the heat off of all the crap that happened to him. And yeah. Could you 
Could you do the uh, Bruce Springsteen song in the background when you play the video? No, the because that days? song is way too good. Dan didn't have the glory days. Only thing I remember about Dan is we had a shot after beating North Carolina to beat Virginia with Othell Wilson and Oldham Polonese. And he threw the ball away. Nah, he got it stolen from him. It got taken. It was it was bad. It was like a 90-year-old woman trying to get on the subway. And some 12-year-old <laughs> just ran out and took his shit and took off with it. It was sad. <laughs> I mean, it was it was truly sad. And it, Dan Dockish's offensive numbers, I know these are going to blow you away. He played 33 minutes. He made two shots. He had four points. Ooh, sounds Pretty like Grizzly. Now, Michael Jordan uh, played 26 minutes because he fouled out. He was six for 14. He missed a free throw. He only had 13 points. The star of that game was Sam Perkins. Sam Perkins had 26. But the actual stars of the game were Steve Alford and Nuve Blob. It was the best game I remember seeing Uwe Blob play. And there weren't too many of them. No, that's that was really it's the only game I really remember. He played well, but <laughs> it was a big game. That's my point. But all right, guys, we will be back tomorrow to talk about a little Indiana basketball administration over the last 30 years. So you want to check us out there, 6 o'clock Eastern, tomorrow night. And we will be back Sunday. What time do they play Sunday, Brian? Uh, I, want to, I want to say three or is it two? I don't remember. Well, we will just plan on going after the game Sunday, like five or six o'clock. So make sure you check us out then. Make sure you check out Big Ten Daily every right. day on the Grueling Truth. <laughs> and as I said, follow us on X. You can follow at Got Woodson or at Got. Uh, uh, then you can follow me at grueling truth make sure you check out betmgm for all your betting needs on all college basketball games and baseball as it's coming up and the nba if you're one of the nine people to watch it but for now for brian moore <laughs> i'm mike goodpass you've been watching and listening to the grueling truth where the legends speak <laughs>